That is the newly elected National Assembly Chairperson, Tandi Mudise there, the Speaker of the House, calling upon the various religious leaders there as they bless the House. What we're waiting for is the official process of the nomination of the President, Sol Ramaphosa, expected to really have it all sealed within a matter of minutes. That's if no one else feels an alternative candidate. Let's make sense of what we've been digesting for the better part of the day and bring in Professor Susan Boyson. She's Director of Research at the Mapungu Institute for Strategic Reflection. Prof, uh, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for coming in. I'm looking here at the numbers. Tandi Mudise's election as National Assembly Speaker. Mm -hmm. She got 250 votes against uh, Tembe Kilemajola from the DA. He got 83 uh, 17 of the ballots cast were spoiled. The EFF, of course, not taking mm. part in the vote. A lot's been said about Tandi Mudisa since the ANC came out and said that she would be their candidate for speaker. Uh, how do you rate her? Well, you know, she managed to keep uh, Shepan roughly even even keel in the very difficult preceding term when she was the uh, she came in to help act in the National Assembly sessions, and I think she sometimes kept her cool in very difficult circumstances. She is a long time standing, relatively good reputation person in the ANC, and so I think she's got proven credentials that she can manage. She's good for the job. But is she the best pair of hands in the ANC? Or would someone like Togo Didiza, who some had favored, would she have done a better job? I know now there are rumors that Didiza may be headed for cabinet, for instance. I know there are, yes. And Togo Didiza, certainly she did some, a pretty awesome job there as well in time. So, yes, I haven't got a problem with her, either one being in that position. And Togo Didiza, should she be going to cabinet? It will be some welcome, fresh blood, relatively untainted blood in these come political blood in these new con political conditions where the ANC seemed to be intent on trying to prove that it was serious with its clean-up mandate despite its candidate list. Let's address then, Prof, the big elephant in the room. <laughs> really storming into ro the room this morning, the ANC's Deputy President, David Mabuza, mm -hmm. apparently asking for postponement of his swearing in as a member of Parliament. He has an outstanding matter with the party's Integrity Commission. He's found to have brought the ANC into disrepute. We don't know much about his exact offence. But is this the end of Mabuza's journey as Deputy President of the country? That's probably the talking point across South Africa today, whether he is taking himself out of politics, he is taking himself out and regrouping with a view to possibly bringing to life the old Premier League. I don't think that's credible. We can talk about that later. Or, alternatively, I've heard reports that he is trying to set an example to those many in the ANC and in senior positions, in parliamentary positions by now, on the ANC's lists, now and less of MPs and trying to set an example for them like go this route pre report yourselves to the integrity committee because they are a at the point of calling these people to account and the ANC wants to see its own integrity committee doing that so that they don't get embarrassed by opposition party motions for these matters to go to the parliamentary ethics committee. Mm -hmm. So by doing this he is possibly not taking himself out, possibly wanting to clear the air, wanting to give explanations to the integrity committee. Integrity committee we know contradictorily hasn't got definitive powers. It reports back to back is subject to the ANC's NEC, but it will be a huge endorsement for possible further actual employment in possibly even in the near future as Deputy President should the Integrity Committee then make a positive recommendation to the NEC and the NEC will be under much of an obligation to listen to that recommendation. That brings us into the rumors the names that have been now been thrown into the hat for the job of Deputy President, some of it, of course, most of it, in fact, quite unofficially, because <laughs> Sir Ramaphosa will make that announcement. Mm -hmm. You just scan through the social media platforms, you see names such as Nkosa Zonatamini Zuma come up, Lindy mm -hmm. Wesusulu is another one who's come up, and Lady Pando's name also coming up mm -hmm. a fair bit. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a report, I think it was in the Sunday Times, that there was some backroom maneuvering to get Paul Mashadile mm -hmm. to position him for the job. From the names that you've heard, Naledi Pando is actually another one mm -hmm. we've heard spoken about unofficially. Mm. When you look at all of those names, who among those people is the best possible candidate for the role of Deputy President now that David Mabuza appears to be all but out? 
In the first place, David Mabuza, and I don't know if I'm not going to have a comment here on who's the best one, but let's talk about strategically the most likely ones. And I think David Mabuza does remain at the top of that list. There is nothing I've tried to read, not a constitutional lawyer, but tried to read the Constitution very carefully. The relevant sections in the Constitution does not say that the Deputy President has to be appointed at the same time as the Cabinet, and it is quite open on, the, on those points. So I would not say say that Didi Mabuza has closed the gate on his own possible so to ascension into that. Yes, definitely. And as long as he's not ruled out, given his position as Deputy President of the ANC, given his evidence of willingness to change camps from the Zuma camp to the Ramaphosa camp at Nazrek, he has shown loyalty and strategic in some strategic insights, otherwise not that great, but some strategic insight on that front. So he is there, and I have also heard that Nkosa Tassana Dlamini Zuma would be a good running mate for Ramaphosa because it would help him counter factional divisions in the ANC and maybe even position him well for a second term as president of the ANC. We others, we know they are ones with big ambitions or modest ambitions. Now, Dr. Naledi Pandor is a very credible voice there. She has served a long political innings, but is perhaps a deputy president that would not necessarily want to ascend, have that ambition to ascend into the presidency of the ANC. Some have said she also doesn't suit the profile of a potential president in the long run. Uh, I don't think she has got that outgoing, reach out political charisma that many top level politicians come with, but it could be good for the ANC in terms sense of having some sensibility and stability and obvious integrity values in there not having been associated too strongly with the Zumaists in, in previous lives. Paul Mashatile, we know he, by all indications at the time of Nazrek 2017, was in some agreement with Didi Mabuza that the two of them would um, pull their help, very powerful Gauteng, Mpumalanga voting blocks, and possibly go into a longer term strategic alliance. So he could very well be positioning himself. And that would also, young is not that young in the ANC, but give a new generation of younger politicians emerge on that front. How much of what we're seeing do you think is the result of political maneuvering by Sol Ramaphosa? Because I remember when mm -hmm. he was elected at Nazrek, a lot of people made quite a meal about how, yes, you may underestimate him on the face of it, but he is quite tactile as a politician because that is what drew someone like Jacob Zuma a lot of praise, <laughs> the fact that he was able to move so many figures. Yes, yes, you know, and people say, have well, me saying, pointing out that Soro Ramposa plays the strategic, more calculated game, not always evident, more on the critical side. I've been said that he doesn't take these decisions. He let processes and other figures, sometimes judges, sometimes other politicians, unfold his political game for him. And this would actually fit that kind of description, given that here are parliamentary processes, integrity committee processes, unfolding and helping to take these decisions. But I would say this is really cutting it very fine, if not too fine in time. Because in effect, one sees that clean up processes of the ANC's candidate list, the elections list, that should have been done before the election, actually, are being rolled out now and pe pressures on people to step down and perhaps Didi Mabuza setting that example to others, go this route and make sure you're cleaned up before we get into trouble in Parliament. I actually think that has been left a bit too late because the ANC and Sir Ramposa already got that mandate from elections two weeks ago, clean up and sort out the corruption in the ANC. And it comes a bit late, and by, then not by any stretch of the imagination will they manage to get all tainted ones out. So the controversies are going to be there. Stick around for us, Professor. I want to get your views on a couple of other things. But now we